Well, good morning, folks. Welcome to Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel. We're here in the Wolf Den one more time. And the reason being is I'm finally getting around, if you've followed along on this channel, I'm finally getting and using some of the rod grip shrink wrap that one of my viewers, Oralock, sent me. He actually sent two different sizes. <coughs> I got another one here. One is quite thicker than the other, or I mean wider. And what I'm going to attempt to do, I've never done this before, but I've done a lot of shrink wrapping before, is I am taking a very old a very old uh, all-star rod that I just absolutely love. It's only a six foot six and let's see, six foot six, 10 to 20 pound, quarter to three, three quarter ounce uh, weight. It's uh, do you remember these old words? I am six graphite. Boy, remember when that was a big deal? And it literally even says right on here, which I got to get an ugly stick out of the way. Good God. You know, just not enough room in this little tiny room. It literally says, I can't even show you because it's going to be upside down because the rod is too long. But it actually says all star graphite rods. Made in the USA! Holy shit! Can you believe that? Holy smokes! Made in the USA. I am 6 Graphite. It's a model WRI. <laughs> Remember when everything was simple? That's what this rod is. And I'm sure a bunch of you out there have some old ones. Here's what I had on this for, on the rear grip here because this has always been like this has always been uh, like a lure throw and top water plug for me inshore saltwater fishing uh, not bass fishing. I actually used some of this. Look, look at it. <laughs> this is what's left of this grip cover that would go on, let's say, like tennis rackets. I put that on there to protect the, uh, the cork. And look at it, it is completely destroyed. I didn't destroy it, it's just destroyed from use. So, since old Orowalk sent me this shrink wrap grip uh, stuff. I am going to try and put it right here. And then I think I'm going to try and put a little piece right up here. And I'm actually going to kind of go over the rod a little bit too. My dad gave me this rod. <clears throat> oh man, I can't even begin to tell you when. So it really has some sentimental value to me. See, that's the funny thing. I'm a fisherman. I'm in the fishing business. But did I ever get, I mean, nobody ever, you know, let's say when I was even a kid, maybe. Well, maybe different when I was a kid. But since adulthood, I've never received hardly a single fishing, uh, rod, reel, or anything for like, you know, a birthday present or nothing. Because they're always afraid, you know, they're probably going to buy the wrong thing or something. It's a very light rod with these single-footed guides. And one eventually broke. So, you can see right there, that's a single-footed guide. And then I wrapped a double-footed guide on it. And let me see if I can get the light even lower here so you can really see it. 
There is my sticking it to in between two books. You open two big thick books. Remember those things? Books? <laughs> Nobody has a book anymore. Uh, I set it, you know, between two books. And I held some thread. And I turned it. That's called putting your own guide wrappings on. Um, that's a, a real hack method. And it's not pretty, but I'm telling you, it's strong. And it works. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter that it's exactly like this one or the threadings exactly. But I will continue to do that if more of these eyes break. Because I absolutely love this rod. It's kind of stiff. And that's what, why it works for throwing like top water plugs. I am going, I've already got this piece cut. And I'll put this video in my... Uh, Maybe my tackle junkie playlist for the sheer fact that this isn't going to be really a how-to because I've never done it before. Or a walk said use a heat gun. And of course, I got my Harbor Freight Drill Master, my Drill Master Harbor Freight heat gun sitting right here. I'm going to cut a piece for the foregrip here and go over the cork. This is all cork, if I didn't mention. <laughs> all right, here we go. One thing that makes it a lot easier, I was cutting it with these, this little utility knife type thing, electrician's, um, it's a Mora electrician's knife. It's a lot easier to do it when you got some skizzers. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna put it right here. And, like I said, I'm, I'm doing it just as Orwalk said. I'm making it a little longer. Here we go. I don't think I have too many heat settings left on this. You're supposed to, like, push the button and you have high and low. Alright, here we go. It's shrinking. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. Gotta keep this thing moving. I... I'm sure. I'd rather not have to trim it after I get done. It's not shrinking that much on this end. I would like it to suck right down onto the rod blank. I don't think it's going to go that small. It doesn't seem like it wants to go that small. Like right here. It's doing good everywhere else. This area right here, just like it did here. I'm afraid to get too close to my rod blank. All right, let's see. I'd like it to seal this off completely right here. And it doesn't seem to want to do it. I'd like it to get smaller right here and go around this. Why, why won't it do it? It did it here. Horrorlock, what's going on, brother? Thing is, I don't want to leave like a big gap here. I don't want to have like a hole here or anything. I really want it to suck down around there, but it won't do it. It did it over here. On this end, but it's not doing it over here. I'm not a shrink wrap expert, so y'all are seeing it. First hand, first hand. All right, well, it won't shrink down right in here, so I cut a little bit off, because I had it kind of hanging off. And I'm going to see if you can see the light here if I can get it to shrink down on there but it just doesn't want to seem to what's up with this stuff there or walk all right let me try it again that's not good well maybe it is doing it now whoo my god is that hot I gotta get out an old sock dun, 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 dun. See? Old socks. I got all new socks, so old socks become rags. Let's see if I can squeeze it down on there. That's not good. I want it completely sealing that cork. I don't know if any of y'all have ever tried this before. It's not like I hold the rod there, but... So, now I got this back portion. And 
I got that sort of measured. Oh, wrong piece. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Let's give this a shot. All right, here we go. I know what the deal is here that probably it can only shrink down. I mean, it only shrinks down a certain percentage. I kind of get that. But up front here, I like it going over the real seat a little bit right there too. Keep it moving, I'm sure, keeping it moving. I love this rod. It's back when, not that long ago, when things were much different, you know? It's kind of a vintage rod, I guess you could say, and now it won't be so vintage. All right. Let's see here. Oh, well, good thing it just doesn't have, this doesn't have any glue in it. It's not like the marine, uh, the marine sh heat shrink you use on electrical fittings. Um, no glue in it. Well, oh, it didn't shrink down right here. I still got looseness. Same thing here, it just didn't want to shrink down on the end. Banging this rod all over the place. Okay, now we're gonna try this again now. It doesn't shrink in length as much as you think it would. Oh yeah, this gives this rod an entirely different new feel. And it's not so ugly. That's the reason I'm not a Quirk fan. I've always been an EVA foam fan for the sheer fact that, you know, you can wash foam. Put it under the sink with some soap and water and a toothbrush. And you can make foam just look wonderful again if you want. I've never been a cork guy. Now, this still isn't tight. I'd love this to be really tight right here, but I think I'll just leave it alone. It's not like I do a lot right with my hand there. So, all right, let's take a look at it. There you go. Putting the shrink wrap and rejuvenating an old rod. Yeah, that feels pretty good. That feels pretty good. Now, let's see if we can stick a Ryoga on here. Because what I wanted to do is, you know, I use, everybody asks me on my boat about these. That ain't nothing but a goddamn zip tie from the electrical department at Home Depot with a hole in it, folks. Everybody goes, oh, what's that? What's that? What? You've never walked through the electrical department and looked at the zip ties at a local Home Depot? Probably not. They probably haven't been there and ever done that. I wanted to make sure because, see, I have to back the real seat off a skosh, and I know this is going to run up on that area right there. And let's see if this will still go on here good. Ooh, yeah, okay, it just barely goes. Because I that's where I, you know, use that hook hanger. This rod didn't come with a hook hanger. So I always just take this and point it down. Alright. So there we go. Took an old rod. That was sort of getting ugly looking. Oh yeah. Walking that dog. Yeah. Okay, I can dig it. I can dig it. It just didn't get tight up here. I don't know why, but see right here, right here, let me get the light on it. Right here it sucked down around the edge, but up here it didn't want to really. I mean, it did, but not that much. All right, my old all-star graphite rod. I guess you can try it. 
Um, I'll put a link below of where you can find this. And it has many different usages. Usages. And you can get it in different sizes. And Oral Walk told me, what did he say? He can, you can put this on net handles and, I don't know, you could probably take it just like Plasti Dip and go like that if you got some smaller stuff, right? And put it on a pair of pliers. Yeah, like when's the last time you ever saw these? These are... Um, what do they call them again? Sergeant Fishing Pliers, New Haven, Connecticut. Made in USA. Big, bad ones that weigh like a, they weigh like a pound. When's the last time you saw anything like this? I don't even take these out on the boat. These are for the wolf den only. So, oh, there's something else I wanted to show you, too. Just since we're here, this is where I keep all of my schematics and things like that for uh, fishing reels in a royal crown bag. And I wanted to show you the difference of something here. You know, I'm big into old school. I just, it's just that way. I mean, Here's what you get when you buy an ugly stick now. You get some printed ugly stick striper. You get some printed material here about the, the way they construct them, the warranty, the ugly tough guides, uh, more warranty information, talking about the clear tip. That's what you get now. It was not long ago. This hung on a hung on a rod eye. It was not long ago that this is what came on an ugly stick, wrapped around the blank while at the store. Back when they were proud, ugly stick was proud of seven year warranty. Proud that it was a Shakespeare. All right, and look at that ugly stick striper. This isn't that long ago, folks. Okay, genuine ugly stick. Look at that printing is like um, shiny, right? Then you opened it up, more record fish caught on ugly stick rods. And it talks about over the past 25 years, there's been more... Uh, stuff going on with ugly stick than ever before guy showing a striper there's another guy with a striper uh, then all about your warranty your limited warranty and then all the other ugly sticks ugly stick like graphite they don't make this anymore that was I have literally a video about the ugly stick lights and now how you can only find ones that are similar to them at Walmart called the intercoastal. Intercoastal, that's the key word. Then you had your ugly stick customs, your ugly stick big water, and your ugly stick tiger. And this was wrapped around the rod like this. And look what they actually had. Little pieces of Velcro here. So there you go. I save stuff like this because to me, this wasn't that long ago that the world changed. Okay. And I keep all of my real schematics and information and everything. I don't think I have anything else that's too, uh, too vintage in here. Yeah, I keep these are just all the schematics. Don't ever throw your schematics away. So you can work on your reels yourself. So I wrap all this in here like this. I will keep the new one. See, this is much, much cheaper to make than this wonderful little wrap that went around the rod. Where, you know, this is actually, I was about to say, I didn't know if this was glued on. It's glued on. 
Uh, it almost looked like there was stitching underneath of it. And that's the difference now, folks. The world has gone to hell in an absolute handbag. And why? Probably it's all to do with China. China, globalists, and all the other crap out there. So I'm keeping all this stuff. I keep all this because it's something to show people. You know, they always say, when you're well and gone, and somebody has to go through your belongings, is when they really get to know you best. When they're having to go through, and I'm telling you, with all my stuff, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a uh, a real trip through memory lane. So thanks for watching. That was my attempt to take an old rod that I love, 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 and make it new again. So I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. I know this was just an impromptu little thing. So cut me a break. See you later.